So this is in Iran. This is a uh, official from the Ministry of Ed- Education visiting the school who apparently girls are just taking off their hijab like the badasses that they are, right? And this guy came here to do some um, disciplinary, like talking to the girls and tell them to cut it out or something. And this is how the Iranian high school girls, okay? These are children, okay? And again, you have to understand that taking off your hijab in Iran is a crime. Hmm. And a lot of women in Iran have paid a heavy price for it um, and they continue to do so right now, right? As you will see once I go through the story of one of them. And yet these badass girls are taking off their hijab in defiance and kicking out the official from the Ministry of Education. They gang up on him and kick him out of the school. This is so badass. Look at watch this. Let me know if you have audio. Mm-hmm. We got audio. Mm. <laughs> the look on his face. <laughs> so wow. cool. and they wow. cheer at the end so yeah. happy that they managed to uh kick him out also um be sh- they ch- they they're chanting be sheriff be sheriff while they're kicking him out which means without honor or honorless or another translation might be uh shame hmm. i think shame would be also a good translation for it right here's another one this is also pretty good <laughs> these like, teenagers so brave um, amazing yeah resist um yeah all right so watch this one this is also pretty good so this one um this one there's oh they they in this video so the caption doesn't explain but i know the explanation for this okay they have a irgc official so part of the um the armed forces coming to this um, school for girls to also lecture them about why what they're doing is wrong, why protesting wow. against the Islamic regime is wrong and everything, right? And this was supposed to, again, be a moment where he comes and puts them in their place, right? And so the caption says, by Masih Alinejah says, these are the schoolgirls that have been humiliated for a lifetime. They have been brainwashed for years to say death to America. They have been brainwashed to follow Islamic ideology. But now they shout against tyranny, go to hell. Yeah, so they all um, shout at him, go to hell, go to hell, while he's trying to give them a lecture about how what they're doing is wrong and everything. That's incredible. They're saying Basiji Borogomsho. Basiji is like part of the morality police, right? And they're like, Basiji, get the hell out. Basiji, get the hell out. <laughs> so, so. And that guy did not think it was going to go that way, did I he? I don't think so. <laughs> and look, they have their hijabs off as well. This is yeah. like five years ago, like when we got, I remember five years ago, Every time we got a picture of a woman taking off her hijab in Iran, we would be like, oh, my God, that's so unbelievable, so so brave, so unique, so well. Mm-hmm. And now, like, it's just a sea of women taking off their hijab. Like, this was unimaginable. We used to get, like, five pictures a year of this, of, like, somebody, like, taking off their hijab or something, like, something like that. Not, like, a ocean of you know, videos and images. You know, like, we're getting buried out in an avalanche of, videos and uh, images coming out like this like it's becoming the norm to take off their hijab it's crazy yeah you know? and it puts them in a really weird a really weird spot the regime and I, you you had highlighted this on secular jihadists um where they're they're talking to people that are pro-regime but are still 
improperly wearing the hijab, right? They're they're not they're not actually covered the way that the the law says you have to be, but the regime has no choice because there are so many people protesting. There are so many people against uh, or, or revolutioning. I don't know if what what you I don't know how that word works, but uh, you get what I'm saying. Like it, yeah. it it's at a point now where if they really do want to. So let's say they actually enforce this. Let's say let's say all of this ends tomorrow, right? And they actually go about trying to enforce criminalizing these people. You're going to have thousands and thousands of people that you're going to have to get, right? And that's absurd to begin with. But on the flip side, if you don't then do something after, again, assuming like hypothetical, this just all stops tomorrow and they just go out and say, all right, everybody's good. Well, now you just look like a huge hypocrite, right? Now you just yeah. now you just look really bad. You don't you look like you've lost control and you've lost power. So, it's it's definitely not a good outcome either way. I think um, for for the Iranian regime. Now, I'm not losing any sleep over that. I'm I'm you know, bad outcomes for them is probably better outcomes for the world. So, yeah, and also they're losing a lot of soft power very fast internationally. I don't yes. know if people understand the significance of that. That's like, um, it, it's an embarrassment for them, and mm. they're having they're they're finding few allies around the world for um, supporting them. You um, you just made me you just made me think of something real quick. Um, uh, b before you before you play this one, so the the World Cup is coming up, right? Oh, like yeah. uh, soon, and that's in Qatar. Do you think we're gonna see any? Do you think we're gonna see any? Um, like people in the crowd, you know, like sneak in a, a, a banner or something and like really highlight what's going on in Iran or, or do you oh, think that's, that's going to be so heavily policed? Yeah, I just it literally just came to my mind when you said that. I mean, it's not heavily policed. It's the the Qatari um, government is not going, I don't think they're going to enforce, um, you know, any laws that forbids them people to protest against the Iranian regime, so I don't think you have to sneak that in. I mean, mm -hmm. for crying out loud, they're even allowing alcohol now. Yeah, yeah. I know they're really they're really going for the they're really going for for that same like, hey, look at me, I'm great kind of look, you know, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. just like a couple of other places have. But yeah, I I don't know because I th I think it puts them in a weird spot either way, right? Because if 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 we see a good we see a good bit of that going on throughout the games, let's say, um, yeah. you know, there might be talks. Uh, from the Iranian government that like, hey, look, you know, we told you, we told you all this time, like, watch out for Qatar. They they hate us. They're coming after us, you know, but yeah, it's, I, I definitely will be watching, not just because I love, you know, soccer, but uh. yeah, <laughs> um, soccer is a religion in Iran, by the way, I think yeah. it's a bigger deal than Islam. Mm -hmm. Um, so the. There's no God on YouTube live chat is asking, what is your thoughts about topless protests? Um, there was one um, feminist Iranian in, I think, London, that, I don't know, London, somewhere in Europe, uh, that was pro that was joining these protests against the regime, and she was full nude, I think. Um, and that got a lot of coverage it's by the pro-regime people, because they were like, look, we were, we were right. Mm. They don't, the people who want to take off your hijab they want to go all the way like they say yeah. today is the hijab tomorrow is going to be your underwear right um and that's why a lot of anti <laughs> what? i'm me. sorry i just i like the thought of somebody being like yes constantly nude all the time no clothes <laughs> in public whatsoever like ah oh, man i'm sorry it gets kind of cold around here i don't know what uh... yeah. no i mean um so th this is like that's actually a line of reasoning for for from pro regime uh, people. They say like if we get rid of the hijab, what makes you think that they're gonna just stop at the hijab, right? Wow. They're going to these are people that are gonna go all the way, all right? And also the narrative from the pro regime people is that the people the mostly the people who are pushing for this anti hijab narrative are horny men that they just want to come for your wives and your sisters and for your daughters and that's why they have so much interest in removing the hijab because they're horny that's the narrative from the regime 
that's generated, right? And they use that uh, feminist coming in. I mean, may, it's interesting because like they, first of all, I don't actually have any problem with people being nude if they want to, like that's yeah, me, totally. right? <laughs> yeah, totally. But um, but if they are so afraid of it, the, the comeback to that is like, listen, even most Islamic countries do not mandate the hijab. Most Islam, no, I'm not, I'm not even saying most countries, even most Islamic countries don't mandate the hijab. And you're not seeing people going nude there. So your, your argument is invalid. Um, yeah. I mean, even in places where nudity is allowed, yeah, people are not going nude. Yeah. Most, like, most people. Like yeah. definitely. Uh, I think France has a, a pretty, well-known culture of you know being a little bit more open and fluid with these types of things and yet at the end of the day i i guarantee you a lot of people are wearing clothes in front like most yeah. of them most of the time yeah um d is saying in the live chat i am not hopeful that anything will change look at Myanmar, Myanmar and hong kong That's honestly awesome. iran would be lucky to get to a place where Hong Kong or even Myanmar are right now. Mm -hmm. So if that's your measurement, that would be major progress for the situation with, that we have right now in Iran, right? Also, I, I do think like uh, having a cu culture of protest and revolution and rebellion uh, improves things, not in one or two generations, but like over a longer time span, right? Like yeah. if you look at the French Revolution, for example, um, if you were judging the success of it in the few decades after it, it looked disastrous, right? Like there was a lot of choppings of heads um, at, right after the revolution, um, more misery than before the revolution. And the, eventually what happened was a dictator, worse than the, like a bigger dictator came into power, right? So they removed the king and eventually Napoleon came to power. Like they just replace one dictator with a bigger one, right? Um, so it looked pretty bad. Like the French Revolution's, um, you know, outcome didn't seem promising at all. Yeah. But if you zoom out a little bit and look at it over like a hundred years or two hundred years, it was the best thing that ever happened. Not just to France, but to the God, to the planet, right? Like the whole world is a better place because of the French Revolution. So yeah. I think like. If you look at it like that, then the outcome might be a lot better than what you thought. Um, yeah, genie out of the bottle, exactly. Uh, okay, uh -huh. so what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, I definitely, I would say that um, as with a lot of major overturnings of, of uh, various governments or just political paradigms or whatever, you know, even, even you know, go back to a time when uh, the Roman Empire fell, right? You know what what caused that and and what that ultimately led to it it takes so long for us to really see the results of that like everybody wants to especially in the united states a president gets elected on day one and by like day four they're like look at all the terrible things the president did and it's like that's not really how stuff works it's it's a much longer period of time i would yeah. say that when you look back at a lot of the revolutions and and you know changes of, of government and stuff that were really really massive the ones that have a quicker track record to providing benefits are the ones that seem to be less uh, bloodshed and less violence and, and more attempting to be in a democratic style of, of reorganization at the end. Yeah, yeah, I mean that definitely wasn't that, that definitely wasn't where the French Revolution went. They did not really care what people were thinking. They just, you know, if you didn't agree with them, you were gonna die. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think if this continues with with the excitement that it has and stays, because um, it it hasn't been it hasn't been bloodless, right? There has definitely been bloodshed, but that has been done by the Iranian government. That has been done by them killing their citizens in cold blood. And if it stays more peaceful, I think on the side of the protest, I think that's I think that's good. Because I think that that gives the world a sense that hey, this is a this is a, an effort that people really want change. Um, so hopefully it, it it does stay like that. But you know, we don't know honestly. Yeah. Um, Vega Ness in the live chat saying, I mean, 
You never change things by fighting against the existing reality to change something, build a new model that makes the old model obsolete. We already have a new model. It's called a secular democracy. And that's what, um, you know, the Iranian, many of Iranian people want, right? Yeah. So the model doesn't need to be created. The model already exists and people have seen that it works and that's yeah. what they want. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.